conformément à l'article 39 du règlement intérieur provisoire du Conseil, j'invite les intervenants suivants appelés à présenter un exposé à participer à la présente séance. M. Danilo Turc, président du groupe mondial de haut niveau sur l'eau et la paix. Madame Christine Berli, vice-présidente du comité international de la Croix-Rouge. Et M. Sandip Walslkar, président du groupe de prospective stratégique. Colleagues, despite these serious challenges, we must also recognize the potential for cooperation around the shared water resources. Three quarters of UN member states share rivers or lake, lake basins with their neighbors. Shared water has historically and sometimes rather improbably brought adversaries together and served as a crucial confidence building measures in both interstate and intrastate conflicts. Je donne à présent la parole à M. Sandip Wasleka. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to compliment the government of Senegal and Your Excellency, uh, Minister Mankar, for convening this debate on water, peace, and security, which I understand is happening for the first time in the history of the Security Council. I would like to take this opportunity to address three questions. One, why should the UN Security Council address the linkage between water, peace, and security? Two, what is that the Security Council can do to create a positive relationship between water and peace? And three, what is that the UN system and the international community can do? To answer the first question, the Secretary General, in his briefing, already pointed out how water can be a source of crisis. He also pointed out how water can be a source of cooperation. One of the greatest challenges of our time is how to transform water from a potential source of crisis into a potential instrument of cooperation. If the political and intellectual capital of the world can be applied to this question, I'm sure we can find answers. What are we talking about, Mr. President? Currently, there are about 2 billion people living in shared river basins in the developing world. So it's the future of 2 billion people that this meeting is addressing. Many times we feel that water is a local issue or it's a regional issue. And it can be managed or ad addressed with good governance at the local level or good transboundary cooperation at the regional level. But increasingly, we are finding out that water is also a global security issue. In the last six years, we saw that when mismanagement of water combined with mismanagement of climate change and drought and combined with mismanagement of politics happened in some parts of the world, it led to displacement of large number of people, and the refugees went from one part of the world to other parts of the world, leading to severe political consequences in different parts of the world. So what we do with the management of water in combination with management of social contract and political relationship in any one region could have implications for other regions of the world. And this is what we saw in the last three years in particular. If you look ahead, and if you see the rate at which the water resources are depleting, there is a risk that the net availability of water could go down, of fresh water could go down by 25 to 30 percent in the next 20 years. And this could lead to decline in the production of food grains. What it will mean is that by 2030 or 2035, some of the countries which are self-sufficient today could enter the international food grains market as importers. If you have additional demand of 100 to 200 million tons of food grains, suddenly, then you will find that the food grain prices are skyrocketing all over the world. 
And even though the important countries will be only in some parts of the world, the impact will be felt by poor people all over the world. And therefore, Mr. President, we must recognize the global nature of the, of the relationship between water, peace, and security. Secondly, the strategic foresight group with which I have a privilege to be associated has undertaken a number of studies. And we found assessing the situation in 148 countries with shared river basins and more than 220 shared river basins in the world that any two countries which are engaged in active water cooperation with political support do not go to war for any reason at all, whether related to water or whether unrelated to water. Thus, there is a direct correlation. That's something that we can see through the water cooperation quotient between water cooperation and reduced risk of war. Therefore, it's in the interest of the international community that this relationship is further examined and explored. What we also found is that there is a continuum in the management of water relations. Water managers can manage the day-to-day -day, day -day relations in, uh, in basins. But when it comes to introducing large infrastructure projects, when it comes to addressing the question of big public goods and trade-off be between water and other public goods like large investments and security, then the involvement of managers of political systems and the managers of security uh, establishments is really necessary. So at the routine level, water managers can manage the water relations. But at a more complex and more complicated level, involvement of national security establishments, regional security establishments, global security establishments, and the mainstream political leaders is absolutely necessary. Therefore, Mr. President, water is not just a subject relevant for SDG 6. It can also be used in a positive way as a tool to achieve SDG 16, which is about peaceful and uh, inclusive coexistence of people. And therefore, Mr. President, water is a subject that's very much owned by the Security Council. I would now urge the members of the Security Council to consider something unconventional, something unprecedented. Considering that the impact of management of water is not always confined to one region, but there is always a risk that it can uh, have implications for different regions of the world, considering that there is a positive relationship between water cooperation and comprehensive peace and security, and considering that water can make a useful contribution to the achievement of SDG 16, I urge the Security Council members to apply their mind to see if they can find some unconventional, some unprecedented way to proclaim water as a strategic asset of humanity. How you do that, you are the best judge, and you know the, the rules and procedures of the Security Council. I'm an outsider. Mr. President, I was touched by the briefing made by Christine Burley of ICRC. The work that ICRC is doing in some of the conflict zones is amazing. It's highly commendable. But we need to support them, and we need to support similar organizations. And how can we do that? Earlier this year, UN Security Council passed resolution protecting medical in installations and medical personnel. If I am not wrong, it was UN Security Council Resolution Number 2286, but the members can correct me if I am wrong on this technical detail. Can the Security Council consider passing a follow-up resolution inspired by Resolution 2286 in the same spirit also to protect water installations and personnel protecting water resources. It's a 
thought that I would like to urge you to consider. And going beyond that, I would also like to ask the Security Council members, and in particular the permanent members of the Security Council, to consider if once in a while you can consider negotiating an occasional ceasefire in protracted conflicts to repair and restore the water systems. Such a ceasefire can last for a week or for three days or four days. And let me explain my logic for this, uh, for this, for this uh, request, uh, Mr. President. Many members of the United Nations systems, particularly including some of the permanent members of the Security Council, are investing huge amount of resources and the best of their talent and the best of their scientific minds to find water on the Mars, to find water in the, on the, on the um, uh, uh, moon of Jupiter, and to find water in some other part of the universe so that uh, human civilization can exist. If we can invest human capital, intellectual capital, political capital to find water on another planet, why can't we find some way and some means to negotiate a ceasefire just for a few days from time to time to protect the water resources and water installations on this planet? So I would strongly like to urge the members of the Security Council to, 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 to consider this. It is also uh, important to see how in different ways we can protect water resources. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, yourself and uh, Christine Burley have mentioned how the, how the water resources are being increasingly targeted. The Department of Political Affairs has uh, counter-terrorism implementation task force. Whether the mandate of this task force can be specifically expanded or sharpened also to include protection of water infrastructure and water resources from terrorist actions. How we do that is, of course, the Department of Political Affairs will be a better judge to do it. Finally, Mr. President, there is also a role for the international community beyond the Security Council, but guided and inspired by the Security Council. And that role is to incentivize water cooperation. We not only have to look at the protection of water uh, infrastructure, but we must also see how we can have preventive diplomacy and preventive measures to promote uh, uh, water, infrastructure, water cooperation. And in this, the role of financial incentives is very important. The Secretary General and the President of the World Bank uh, have launched a very important uh, panel on uh, uh, water uh, uh, as a sustainable development goal. My friend Danilo Turk is chairing a panel on water and peace and security. Now, the objectives of these two panels can be linked through a very innovative measure. And the measure I propose is that the board should consider creating a blue fund only to take care of interest and insurance and other related costs of collaborative water infrastructure. Not the water infrastructure which is built within the countries, but water infrastructure which is built through cooperation between the countries. And if we can do that, and if we can have only $1 billion of uh, annual uh, fund, which can be easily carved out of the, the Green Challenge Fund, which has got a $100 billion budget per year, $1 billion of annual replenishment can create $30 billion of collaborative infrastructure the worldwide. The mathematics of this can be, can be explained later on. The question, therefore, is, Mr. President, that we have to look at water as an instrument of cooperation. We have to bear in mind it could be a potential source of crisis, but we have to find a way to convert, convert it from, from potential source of crisis to potential instrument of cooperation. And to do that, in conclusion, we have to look ahead. We have to be unconventional. We have to look up things which we have not thought of. And philosophically, I would urge you only to have relook at 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 something uh, 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 
to in order to shape our our future and that is our look at the way uh, that is how to look, how we look at the time we often look at time in the following fashion we think that first there is a past then there is a present then there is a future in reality first there is a future what is future today will become present tomorrow and what is present to, uh, today will become past uh, later so first there is a future then there is a present and then there is a past if we look at this direction of time then we will take it upon ourselves to shape the future and instead of looking at the past we will look at the future we will look at prevention we will look at the next generation and once we start looking at the next generation once we start looking at the future in a creative way i'm sure that the world has enough talent the world has enough political will the world has enough capacity to find solutions to our problems and the security council and your chairmanship mr president can provide guidance and provide inspiration thank you mr president for giving me this opportunity je remercie monsieur wasle card de son exposé